Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, what's going on? Welcome back to another one nil video. Thank you very much for joining me because it is once again that time of the year where I try and predict where I think teams will finish in the upcoming season. Now, some of them might make you go, what is this guy talking about? The others might make you go, interesting, he's got a good point. So hopefully we've got a bit more of those than the first one. But please, once I'm going along with it, Please drop a like, drop a subscribe, uh, drop a subscription to the channel as well, and drop where you think that team has got to finish in that season. I want to see your Premier League predictions down below. I know you all do them in your notes, so just copy your notes and put them down in the comments down below. Number twenty. Let's get straight into it. Number twenty. Number twenty. Who's going to finish rock bottom? Like Stone Cold Steve Austin when the Rock picked him up and they went bang rock bottom. I'm going to go Fulham. I think Fulham. They're becoming the yo-yo club, similar to Norwich. Okay, I think Fulham, you know, they did well to get promoted. Mitrovic, obviously, can he actually do it again in the Premier League? He's always the best player in the Championship. He's always scoring goals for fun in the Championship. But once again, he's got to come to the Premier League with a, you know, expectation again because he's putting up these unbelievable numbers. But then he always comes and just falls short. And I think Fulham might fall a little bit behind the pace. They've signed Andreas Pereira from Manchester United, if you remember who he is. And I think for Fulham, it's a good signing. Is he a world beater? Probably not, but I think he, I think he could. He, I think he'll produce some special moments for them, 100. But I think Fulham. I think they should finish last. Bournemouth. I'm going to go in for 19th. I don't think Bournemouth are going to be too strong either. Obviously, recently in the Premier League, only a couple of years ago, they've done well to come back in. I think the Championship clubs that are coming up. I don't think we can expect too much from them. I don't think it's that same sort of. You know, Brentford. I don't think we're going to get a big Brentford sort of club. I don't think we're going to get a Leeds from a couple of years ago. I think these three, and, and maybe the championship not being, it didn't feel as exciting like last season, or it didn't feel, even the playoffs didn't feel as big, or it didn't feel as global as what it usually is. I think Bournemouth might struggle as well, and I think they might finish 19th, because, you know, I've, I've got 18 teams that are, that are better than them. So I think Bournemouth will finish 19th. Now in 18th, and the final team to get relegated, this might be the big, the first controversial one, I've gone for Leeds. Now, I think Re Leeds losing Rafinha and Calvin Phillips in the same window, I think it's huge. I, I honestly think they could be done for. I honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Leeds finished 19th. Now, they've got the new manager in, obviously, who came in halfway through the year last year. They've signed some, you know, Tyler Adams, which is a good American youngster. They've signed another American as well, Anderson, I think his name is. And so it's good that Jesse Marsh has gone for what he sort of knows best, but... Is it going to be enough? You look at Rafinha, so many of their goals came through him. You look at Phillips. Yes, he didn't play as much last season. But he was one of the, obviously, he's a leader around the club. He's a Leeds man through and through. And he's an unbelievable holding midfielder. And last year, there's a reason why, Liverpool, why Leeds didn't do well. And that's because Phillips wasn't really there. With injury concerns to Bamford all last season, if he can stay fit, then obviously that's a massive bonus. But if he gets injured again, I think Leeds are going to struggle a lot. I think defensively they've got to struggle. And I think even in attack, taking Rafinha out of that team. He's gone from Leeds to Barcelona. So he's a very, very good player. Okay, I think Rafinha take, getting him taken out of that team, I think it's going to cause a bit of damage to them this season. So let me know what you think about those three relegated teams that I have. I'm going to go 17th position, Southampton. Okay, now 17th. Southampton, it's almost like they're, almost, they're due to get relegated sooner or later. But... For some reason, they just continue to, to, you know, they continue to get these results where, where, they're, where they're holding through. But I think this year could be the closest they actually do come. They weren't good last season. Okay, they've lost Bo uh, Bo Boja, Boja, the striker, the, who they got from Chelsea on loan last season, who was good for them. No, obviously, real goal through it. Shea Adams is there, yes, but can, is he good enough to do it on his own? I'm not too sure. So in 17th position, I've got Southampton. Now in 16th position, I've got the, the next and the final promoted club. I've got Nottingham Forest. Now they've signed Jesse Lingard. They have also lost Jed Spence, one of the you know one of the better players last season. Jesse Lingard's gonna be good for them. Okay. He, he might he might thrive in that sort of environment. A club where there's not a lot of expectation, there's not a lot of pressure. He might just he might absolutely thrive in there. I think personally for Jesse Lingard it's an interesting one because you know he went from having that unbelievable six months at West Ham, got them into a very good position to play European football could have been sold for 30 million to West Ham in that transfer window after. Wanted to stay at United, didn't get the opportunity. Now he's found himself in Nottingham Forest. And it's almost like it was one of those, well, who's sort of got to take me sort of thing? Because I think, I don't think there was that many suitors out there for him. And I think he might have realized that near the end where he, he really, for a long time, didn't have a club to play for. 
you know, there was rumors that he could even be heading to MLS. So, so I think Jesse Lingard, I think he'll do well there. Everyone, I love Jesse, Jesse Lingard. Good on him. I hope he does very well at Nottingham Forest. And Nottingham Forest, you know, not a direct sort of competition to Man United, you'd think. Um, so it's good. I want I want Nottingham Forest and Jesse Lingard to do quite well. In 15th, I've got Brentford. I think Thomas Frank is an unbelievable manager. I think they've got some good players. Are they going to suffer, you know, second season syndrome sort of thing in the Premier League? Possibly. Possibly, very, very possibly they could. But I think 15th, I think for them, they, they might, they, I think they've probably got higher expectations, but I think 15th will be, will be that sort of up and down up and down season for them because there's, there's some very good mid-table teams that are coming up and that are improving. One of those being Brighton, who have got to finish 14th, had a very good season last year. They have lost a couple of players, however. Okay, so Brighton, I think for them, it's going to be interesting to see how they actually do fare against the big dogs. Can they start winning games against bigger teams? Can they start finishing off teams that are below them, you know, and making sure that, okay, I know that as a Brighton fan, when I go to play Bournemouth away, we're going to beat them, you know, we're going to beat them. I know that if I go and play Aston Villa, we can still give it to them. We've got a very, very good opportunity to give it to them. Um, in 13th position, I've got Everton. Now, Everton, it's an interesting one. I think I might have over-pushed Everton a little bit because they were very, very, very poor last year. I'm give, I'm putting Everton in 13th purely because, I don't know, it's a tough one. It's a very, very tough one, Everton. I'm putting them in 13th because I think just Frank Lampard will come in. He's had a preseason with them. And I think he's got to, you know, make, he's, they've gotten rid of Richarlison. Well, not gotten rid because they would have tried to keep him, but they've, got to, they've let a couple players leave. They haven't really signed that much either. So I think Everton could be the one I look back on and say, well, what were you thinking? But I think at the same time, I'm putting a lot of this down to Frank Lampard. I don't think he's the greatest coach in the world. But I think that if, if he can get the team clicking, and Calvert-Lewin is a player that I'm expected to thrive this season to an extent. If he can get that team ticking, I think Everton will be able to... A lot of the reason last year why that was so down the bottom was purely because they just couldn't win against the smaller teams, against the weak oppositions. I think this year they'll start to finish that a little bit. I think Lampard will be able to change his tactics and, and suit the sort of his position and the roles of players to be able to finish those teams and not drop points to teams like a Leeds or a Southampton or a Nottingham Forest. Uh, whereas I do think they will still struggle. I think European football, which sometimes it's possible for Everton, you know, Europa League and Conference League now, I think they're very far away from that. So Everton, it could be an interesting one. In 12th position, now arguably the biggest slider I've got this season, I've got Leicester City finishing 12th. This could be one where, where like, as I mentioned previously in the intro, where you look and go, what is this guy talking about? I think Leicester are going to struggle. Jamie Vardy's getting a year older. Okay. Madison was good last season, but he was... But for some reason, nothing was just really clicking you know, they've kept Tielemans, which is obviously a positive. I just think last season they weren't that good and they haven't improved at all. And I think with other teams improving and Leicester sort of declining, I think Leicester could be in a bit of strife this year. I think it could be the year that Brendan Rodgers does get the flick. Could be Jamie Vardy's last year at Leicester as well. I think Leicester City could be in a bit of struggle town. I think 12th position for them. I don't think they're going to be that 6th, 7th, 8th position guarantee like what they have been the last couple of years. I think Leicester might might fall into a bit of strife because above them in the 11th position, I've got Crystal Palace. Now, Crystal Palace came down here. I watched them play at the MCG here in Australia against Manchester United. Crystal Palace, they did well last year with Vieira. Okay, Maybe overachieved in some people's eyes. Obviously, no Conor Gallagher, which is going to be a big loss, but they've got Eze, they've got Olisi. They've got some very good young talent, Mark Wehi in centre-back. They've got some great, great, great young talent. And for that, and I think Patrick Vieira, I, he surprised me the most last season. For me personally, if there was one of the biggest surprises, for me, it was Patrick Vieira. He really didn't have that much of a good reputation as a manager coming into the Crystal Palace job, but he did really well. You could tell that he got the players behind him. You could tell which players he wanted to have week in, week out, which players he knew that he wanted to have represent the club and put in a good shift week in, week out, and those that he knew that he could trust week in, week out as well. So for that reason, I think I've got Crystal Palace in 11th, one position above them in 10th, I've got Newcastle. Now, Newcastle hasn't really been 
the off season and the transfer window that most Newcastle United fans would have thought, or even most neutral fans would have thought, because they've obviously come in with a massive takeover in Newcastle. They were thinking, okay, we're going to go splash out money. There was people going, they've got to get Mbappe, they've got to get Neymar, they've got to get Hazard, all these sorts of plays. Is it good or bad what Newcastle have done? They've signed Sven Botman. Now, if you're un- unaware about Botman, great young centre-back. One of those young centre-backs that you, you, know, you sign on a career mode because he's got great potential. They sign him for a decent amount of money as well. They've signed a couple of plays here and there, but not, none of these real game changes. None of these real plays where you go, yeah, Newcastle's got to come out with these new owners and they've got to splash the cash and just go for it. Do you like it? Do you not? What are your thoughts on Newcastle's transfer window? I personally think them may be taking it time by time and slowly. I think it's a better approach. Rather than bringing in six, seven new players and just changing the whole landscape around, could cause a little bit more harm than good. I think them taking a steady approach, signing key position players, okay, and then you never know. In the summer, Newcastle now, yeah, they don't have expectations because they really didn't do as much. I think if they if they sign these big players, people would have tried to say, hey, you've got to try finish fifth or sixth now. Eddie Howe's really got you know, similar sort of mid-table expectations, I feel like, with obviously finish, finishing the season off quite well last year. I think Newcastle now will do, do their business throughout the season. Summer transfer window hits and then bang. Bang, bang, boggy. Sorry, winter transfer window. It hits. And they're gone. I think Newcastle United, the way they went this transfer window, I think it's quite good. They didn't sign these huge mega stars that people thought they would. They went and signed some good young talent, not too much. But then once the season goes on, not with a bit less expectation than what maybe th- people thought they might have had, I think that's where Newcastle can pounce. A slow and steady approach could be the best thing for Newcastle in the long term. We might look at them in three, four, five years' time and look back at this first transfer window and say, that first transfer window is what led this approach to building a, a solid club that we now call as this new Newcastle United team. So for that reason, I think, and I think Eddie Howe did well. I think Bruno Gamerich is going to be an unbelievable player. So I think 10th position for Newcastle was fair. In ninth position, I got Wolves. Again, one that I might have overachieved on a little bit. They, they, they overachieved last season. They kind of flew under the radar. And I think they've got to do it again. I think they've got a great manager. And I think the players that they have kind of feel new to the sort of Premier League environment. They've kind of got rid of that team that they had from a couple of years ago, a couple of those players that are, that are sort of out of the mix. Now, I think Wolves might have a decent season. Finishing ninth, I think they've got to start... I think they know how to play against specific teams. And I think they know how to play against your top teams. And they know what to do against the lower the lower teams in the sense of making sure that they are always going to get a result no matter where they are or who they're up against. And I think for Wolves, that's got to be the most important thing. Because you look at the teams below them, I think it's someone like an Everton, Crystal Palace, a Brighton might struggle in that aspect. Now, in eight, eighth position, I've got West Ham. I think West Ham will have another pretty successful season. What doesn't get spoken about enough is how we- the ability of West Ham to keep Declan Rice. Because Declan Rice was probably the name on every, every Chelsea and Man United fans' lips at the start of this season. Declan Rice was very, very popular with the Man United and Chelsea fan base. Everybody thought that this was the summer that we're going to sign Declan Rice. Declan Rice, credit to him, didn't really feed into it. He stuck to what he believed in. Okay, he wants to play European football with West Ham, which is made clear. New West Ham did very well to keep him. Yes, once his contract does expire, we could be doing something different. But I think I think Declan Rice and West Ham, congratulations. I think it's great. I think he's going to have another unbelievable year. I think he's going to be a player to watch because I'm a huge, huge Declan Rice fan. And I think West Ham will have another decent season, finishing eighth. Let me know what you think down below. In seventh, I've got Aston Villa. Now, I think seventh place, Aston Villa, again, last season people had them high and they flopped. Steven Gerrard came in. Did he do as well as what people maybe gave him credit for at the end? I think they've signed Diego Carlos, the centre-back, which is a great signing. I think he's got to solidify that defence. And I personally would have Carlos and Consa in centre-back, even though Consa's coming from, back from injury. But I think po- probably they'll go for a Carlos and Tyrone Mings sort of defensive partnership. Obviously, Lucas Digne is still there. Matty Cash. You look at that back four now, Mings, Digne, Cash, Diego Carlos. That's a pretty good back four. Pretty, pretty good back four. Obviously, San Coutinho on a permanent now. They've got Buendia, who once again is is, is thriving here. Um, Leon Bailey, who was fantastic, fantastic here against uh, in a in a friendly against Manchester United, which I watched, and that was that was unreal as well when they played in Australia. Leon Bailey could be one of those players to watch out for. I think he could be huge for you fantasy fans out there. I think Leon Bailey could be a massive, massive player. I think for that reason, Aston Villa's going to finish 7th. I think they're going to be quite a bit of a gap between 7th and 6th, however. I don't think there's going to be that much 
that much competition between those two players. I think there's got to be more competition for 7th to 10th as opposed from 7th to 6th or 7th to 5th or 7th to 4th, for example. Now, in 6th position, and as you know, if you were a regular on the 1-0 channel, you know I'm a, I'm a tragic Man United fan. And you know that last year I had Man United to win the league. Do you want to know where I got Man United now, ladies and gentlemen? Sixth. I'm going in with zero expectations. I'm going in with zero expectations. Now, Manchester United here. Let's get comfortable for this one. Manchester United, I watched them here. They came to Melbourne. It was a, it was a dream to watch them play. Unbelievable. Next time, hopefully, I watch them play. It's in England. It's at Old Trafford. I think Ten Hag is going to do very, very well as a Manchester United manager. Maybe not this year, but I think definitely in the near future, I think Ten Hag finally might be that manager to kick things going in this new Manchester United era. I think the players that he's signed, I'm not totally against. I think Malasia, I think Malasia is going to be, I think, a very, very, very good left back in the Premier League. He's quite attacking. He love he can play a great ball over the top. I think Rashford and Malasia are going to build a very very nice partnership. I think Rashford from last season that's an anomaly. I think Rashford I reckon he's back this season. I'm sounding like one of those Man United fans again. I know, but I think Rashford and Sancho I think they're going to thrive. That striker position, however, it is a concern. Who is going to guarantee us a 20 goal season? Is it Martial? He had a good preseason. Can he do it? Is it Ronaldo? Who knows what's going on with Ronaldo? Okay. Is he going to stay? Is he even fit? I don't think he's going to play the first game against Brighton. I think he'll start on the bench and Martial will start. And honestly, I think you have to give Martial the start. If Ronaldo doesn't want to do the preseason because he wants to leave, well then, cool. But now you've got to pay for pay the price for it. You're not going to start. We've got to ease you into the games. Ronaldo could be a scary player to come off on the bench. Okay, Imagine it's the 75th minute. It's 1-1. Okay, You bring on Cristiano Ronaldo for an Anthony Martial. You'd think you're in the driving seat to score the next goal, okay? But I'd give Martial the credit where it's due. He had a great preseason. He looks a lot happier. He looks refreshed. And I think Ten Hag coming in plays a massive part. Let Martial start. But that number nine position, you look at clubs around us. Man City go and sign Haaland. Liverpool go and sign Darwin Nunes as soon as Mane leaves, okay? Chelsea got rid of Lukaku. I think they're going to struggle with a bit of a number nine situation as well. Arsenal went and got Gabriel Jesus, and he's got to be their new man that they say, hey, we need you to score goals, and a lot of them. Man United and Chelsea, personally, I think fall in that same bracket of a little bit of a striker dilemma. Now, Lissandro Martinez, I think it's a good signing. I like him. Is he going to start in centre-back? You've got Lissandro Martinez as a £55 million player, okay? A huge signing. Great player, plays with great energy, okay? Loves the club. Now, Lissandro Martinez, 55 mil. Okay, center back. He took the number six and he can play in the number six, but he's quite short and small to play the number six straight away, personally, I think, in the Premier League. If you've paid 55 mil for a defender, okay, of Lissandro Martinez's ability, okay, and you've got Maguire and Varane as your center backs, 55 mil, is he going to start over Varane or Maguire? Personally, I'd love to see Varane and Martinez, okay? But Maguire, they didn't strip him off captaincy, they kept him captain, which automatically makes you think, okay, He's starting every week. Varane, I'd personally start because I still think he's one of the better centre-backs in the world. Does Martinez start over Varane? Does Ten Hag know that Varane's injury history is quite poor and is becoming one of those injury-prone players? So he's almost expecting Martinez to play most games. Then we've also got Lindelof and Bailly. And Bailly was fantastic in preseason. So then who do you go with there? So I think that centre-back partnership dilemma could be a bit of a problem with Manchester United. But... I'm not going to spend too long on them. I think sixth position for Manchester United. I think that's where they're going to finish. I think it could be a very interesting season for them. I think we will do well. I think we will do better. You look at sixth position now and you go, wow, that's an absolute stinker of a season. But I think we'll be okay. But I do still think it's we're in that transitional period. I think we've just got low expectations a little bit as well for Man United. Christian Eriksen as well coming, which is cool. Now in fifth position, we've got Chelsea. I think Chelsea might be in a bit of struggle town this season. I think they're going to be not as much of a threat as what they were in recent years. I think the striker position could be a bit of a worry, even though Kai Havertz does like to play in that sort of role. And I think it could work, especially. But can he guarantee you 20-plus goals a season? I'm not too sure. I know we had a great record last year, but can he do it again? Koulibaly is a great signing, and the defence is huge. The defence is huge. And we know Chelsea, how they play, the defence is one of the most important positions on the pitch for them. Rudiger is a huge, huge loss. Massive loss. 
Huge loss. Is Koulibaly good enough to replace Rudiger? I'm not sure. We're going to have to see. Koulibaly obviously just coming into the Premier League. So it's got to be a little bit of time and make him sort of try and change it around a little bit before he gets kicking. But I think Chelsea aren't going to be as strong as what people might think this season. I think fifth is obviously still a decent position for them. But finishing above them in fourth, I've got Arsenal. They've done well in the transfer window. Gabriel Jesus has been on fire. Arsenal fans are up and about. I hope they don't do well because I don't like Arsenal. But Mikel Arteta, you've got to give credit where it's due. He's built a bit of a team and he's built a squad. They've kept Hector Bellerin, who I think I think is just a cool player. I think he's great for the changing room as well. Zinchenko, I think... And Arteta's clearly gone for what he knows. Obviously, at his time in Man City, he's gone for what he knows. He's gone for who he thinks can... His ability-wise is quite, quite good. And he's signed quite technical players and quite attacking players as well. You look at Zinchenko, he's not your traditional left-back. He could almost play centre midfield, Zinchenko. He's got that ability he could, to even go play left wing or centre midfield, which I think will be quite good for, for Arsenal. But I think for Arsenal to succeed this season, I think Gabriel Jesus is going to have to score goals. But I think players like Emil Smith-Rowe, Bukayo Saka, Martinelli, Martin Odegaard, who was unbelievable last season, I think they're going to be instrumental in making sure that Arsenal do push in for Champions League. Now, Arsenal, what's your, what's your expectations for this season? Because to me, that's got to be the biggest thing. What are Arsenal fans expecting? Are they expecting Champions League football? Okay, Are you guys expecting, similar to last season, not a lot, but then we'll, we'll try and overachieve and then expectations can vary throughout the season. I think if I'm Arsenal now, I'm looking at Manchester United and Chelsea, I go, there's a, there's a fourth position is wide open. I go, why can't I go get it? Why can't I, why can't I go get it? Now in third, and this is where people start to hate me a little bit, and this is where I start to get clipped, and this is where I start to get yelled at by people and close loved ones. I've got Liverpool. I don't have Liverpool third because I don't think they're going to be good. I have them third because I think there's two teams that are going to be better than them. And I have Liverpool third because I think they're kind of at the start of that transitional sort of phase that we see the best clubs in the world you know, for a long period of time start to go into. I think Bobby Firmino is a player that I don't think is going to be as good off the bench as what he was. I think Bobby Firmino, it's quite clear, there's not really in the plans as much anymore. I think Darwin Nunes, good signing, but I do think he's going to flop. And I, I hate the term flop because by flop, I don't mean he's got to score two goals the whole season. I just personally think this Darwin Nunes signing for, for Klopp and for Liverpool, the Darwin Nunes signing for me personally just doesn't seem like a very Klopp signing. Klopp doesn't really like to go and sign the flavour of the months or the flavour of the years. Yes, he had a great record in the Champions League. We can't take that away from the kid. But is he really what Klopp has sort of built this Liverpool team around? I might get a bit of stick for it, but let me know in the comments down below because I think he will be great, but I don't think he's going to be... That star number nine and that star striker. And I know Liverpool don't play with that necessary number nine through the middle, but I'm, I think he's got to come with a little bit more time to build upon as opposed to Haaland. Now, you ask Darwin Nunes or Haaland, I don't think that's even a conversation. I think Haaland, you take any day of the week. And now Liverpool fans are going to bring up the game that just happened and say, hey, did you see the clips? Yeah, sweet. But Haaland, I think he was going to be an absolute machine this season for City. Whereas I think Nunes is going to take a little bit more time to sort of get comfortable in the Premier League. He clearly loves the club already. He's clearly passionate for the game. You can see that he celebrated the community shield like they just won the Premier League. But I think Darwin Nunes is going to take a little bit of time. I'm not going to say he's not going to be a good player, but I think he's going to take a little bit of time, which Liverpool fans have got to be a little bit, they've got to be a bit comfortable with that and comfortable in accepting the fact that maybe he's not going to thrive straight away. So for that reason, I've got Liverpool finishing third. It could be interesting. In second, I've got Tottenham, which obviously means Man City win the league, but we'll touch on Man City. Second, I've got Tottenham. Conte, I think, is going to have one of those seasons where it's very close to winning the title. And then he'll leave next year, but we'll focus on that next year. They've signed some great players. Basuma, okay, long lay. I think Romero, Romero is going to become the best. I think, okay, hear me. Out. I think Romero, after this season, will be up there in the conversations of Virgil van Dijk as the best centre-backs in the Premier League. I think Romero is going to have a huge season this year. And I think that obviously plays into effect to how Conte plays his football. But I think Son, Kane and Kulisevsky is enough for Tottenham to win the league. Call me weird, call me silly. I think Son, Kulisevsky and, Kul and Kane is enough for Tottenham to win the league. That front three could be the most dangerous front three in the Premier League. You look at the Liverpool front three changing of Diaz, Nunes, Salah now. I personally think Son, Kane, Kulisevsky is the best front three right now in the Premier League. Let me know what you think down below. It's tasty. I know it is tasty, 
But I think they, I think Tottenham could have an exceptional season this year. An exceptional season. Now, obviously, me saying that finishes first means I've left one club out, and that's Manchester City. I think purely because of Erling Haaland. I think he's going to score for fun. I think he's going to be an absolute machine. I think Grealish is going to thrive. I think Foden is going to thrive once again. De Bruyne is going to now play balls in to Erling Haaland. Can you but De Bruyne, the best midfielder in the world, going to play it into Erling Haaland? That's unbelievable. Now, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. I know it's been a while since we've done one of these shows. I'm going to try and do it again. I'm also on the Ultra Football Podcast. I'm hosting the new podcast there. So make sure to go check that. We've got to be a new video every single Friday. So if you do want to go check it out, Go there. Go tell them I came from 1-0 and it should be good fun. Thank you for watching. I'm keen for the Premier League season. Hopefully, I can start getting consistent videos out once again. But it is huge. It's a big time, big season. 21 is coming. Man United, let's go. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe. Bye.